Hello, welcome back. If you are following my videos on the sequential order, then you must be realizing that we are discussing about performance test methodology, what are the best practices and how to do it. And at this point, we have already discussed all these five steps. In the next set of videos, our goal is to discuss about result analysis and reporting. In this video, I'm going to explain you performance analysis fundamentals. Okay, so what kind of things you should look and what are the best practices here? So let's uh, rewind a little bit. So this is the big picture of load testing. And what you're seeing here is the load testing tool. And this is your system on the test. And the way it's happening, that there are a lot of load generators like LG1, LG2, LG3, and so on. And these load generators are going to inject load to the system under test and will simulate a workload. And, and what is a workload? A workload is basically a, a mix of different kind of activities to be done on the website. Right? And this controller is going to coordinate so that the workload mix will be matched. And then this controller is going to monitor and collect different kind of resource metrics like CPU utilization, memory utilization, network utilization, and so on. And then those things will be put into a result store and later on in the program to analyze. Right? So in this video, we'll, we'll discuss about this part, okay? how to do analysis. As of now, we have already discussed about load generator, controller, and system under test and so on. So, so there, are, there are two types of analysis. Okay? The one analysis is called real-time analysis. Or sometimes I call this as watchful waiting. Okay. I'll tell you why I'm calling this watchful waiting. And the next type of analysis is called post-test analysis. So, so what is real-time analysis? So in real-time analysis, what we do, let's say for example, whenever test is running, we get a snapshot of data. Like, you know, so let's say test is running for say, uh, zero to one hour and what we do we keep track of what kind of things happening at this moment or a window of 30 seconds let's say and window of 30 seconds what kind of transaction being executed okay and what we expect to see is that if there's an error that is coming out okay and what kind of what kind of system resource being utilized okay so essentially this is we are just waiting, we're just waiting for some incidents not to happen. What kind of incident not to happen is that you know if the, all the tests are failing because let's say for example the network connection between your load generator and system on the test is caught. Okay, so in that case it doesn't make any sense to continue to run the test. Okay, so those kind of things you, you're going to get out of this watchful waiting or real-time analysis. So real-time analysis basically give you a snapshot of a like of a let's say 30 second window. So what is going on in 30 seconds in the past 30 seconds, that's going to give you, okay? And then, now basically here the main objective for you is just wait, wait for test to complete without any, without any error, okay? Without any error, all right? And then, what kind of things that you expected to see here? You should see here the, the response time for the ongoing transaction for the 30 second window, like, you know, how much time it takes to, to do this transaction. And then you like to see what is the resource utilization on the servers? Okay, and then of course you like to see if there are any errors. Okay, and then if there are a lot of errors, then it's your it's up to you if you have to continue test or abort the test. And essentially, this real-time analysis should be really lightweight. So basically, like you know, when the tests are are running from the from the from the controller and load generator, so ensure that whatever mechanism you are doing to collect the statistics or collect to, to do this real-time analysis should be super lightweight. Otherwise, it might impact the testing, right? So, so this is what all about real-time analysis. And then remember that we are logging those, those data to a result store. So after we take in all our performance measurement KPIs or key performance indicators, so what we can do here, we can do a lot of post-test analysis. Uh, essentially, this post-test analysis 
I divided into three parts. Part one is virtual user or the user matrix. Okay. So I want to know how what is the behavior of virtual user. So for example, this is a graph which I got virtual user versus a last time. What this what this graph suggests to you that at zero there are no virtual user. But at the time about let's say this is about five seconds, I have 10 virtual users are up and running and then there all this is going but looks like at this time at this time one user failed okay so therefore one user errored out and my count decreases at this time there are a couple of more users errored out and and if you if you saw this is the graph that and, and at this time looks like you know, all users are shutting down okay so essentially in the Virtual user matrix. I like to see virtual user. I like to see virtual user versus elapsed time. So how the virtual users are running versus timeline. Okay. And also another graph that I would like to see is that how the error rate. You know, so virtual virtual user versus error. So that graph is not here. So what you can do, you can plot something like this. So this is your elapsed time. And number of errors. Okay, and then you, know, you can you can you know it depends on basically it, it, it should be zero always. But like for example, whatever at some time there are there are you know there are five users are failing. Okay, and then there's a mechanism in the load controller that you can restart them. But if you do not want to restart them, then it's fine. But I would like to know error of the virtual user error rate versus elapsed time. So that is one kind of matrix in post test analysis that I can do. So next is very important is called transaction graph. So transaction graphs is like, you know, if you remember that whenever we are sending a request to the server, server is responding. This round trip time is called transaction response time or request response time. So what we need to do, we are basically, this is the, this, this transaction response time is the measurement of performance, all right? And we are collecting this data and we're storing those data in our result store. And what our intention here is once the test is over, then we should be able to analyze those things. And one of the one of the very important thing that we we take is that average response time versus elapsed time. That means so here is a here is a graph. So this is elapsed time. Here are different times of kinds of transaction one is create employee one is update employee another delete employee the create employee transaction is behaving over time like this we are measuring the time taken to create an employee and then let's say we got 20 measurements over a period of say one hour then what we are going to do we are going to plot them in this in the graph like this okay so that is going to give me how average response time for an activity is trending over time and so that is average response time versus elapsed time. Next graph that I like to see how many number of create employee transaction is happening. So that is what you call transaction per second, right? So if you see this is elapsed time in the x-axis, the y-axis number of transaction, and then we have various like you know, for example, this create employee pass transaction is happening. This is the one. Okay, so almost happening on average. Five transaction per second. Okay, so these are the graphs that's going to give me what is the density of those uh, activities. All right. So transaction per second versus elapsed time is another graph. And another graph that I like to know transaction performance summary. And what is transaction performance summary? I like to know how many create employee transaction are successfully done over the duration of the test there are 542 create employee transaction completed whereas 34 transaction failed now, and then also i need to analyze why this thing is failing and then, as, I, as i told you if our performance acceptance criteria is that zero failure then essentially by looking at this this result i say that the system is not yet ready okay so one more kind of analysis is there and that is called resource uses. 
Okay, so I would like to know what are the CPU consumption of my server during the test. Here's a graph that, that we got. This is elapsed time here, and here percentage CPU utilization. And in percentage CPU utilization, we are also also breaking it down to two two parts. One is how much user percentage. That means how much your application is is consuming, and how much your system is consuming. So as you see, whenever we are running the load test, we are we, we are doing a lot of application. Uh, we are using application extensively. So I expect that the user mode should be quite high, and system mode should be low. But it depends again on kinds of application and so on. But however, this graph is going to show you the CPU utilization. And similarly, we can have the memory utilization. Like say, for example, I, you know, this is a free memory that was available at the start of the test. As we are starting to ramp up user, as users started to log in, they started to consume some memory. And and the usage is like this: like, you know, at this time, we reach a steady state for memory, and then it is it, it, it is remains steady. And then again, when the users are logged out. Or users are aborted, then the memory is freed and comes back. So what you are seeing here is a very ideal case. Believe me, this kind of graphs you will never get it. Okay. So sometimes you get that okay, like you know the memory started to decrease, 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 and keep decreasing. And if this is kind of a graph, then that is a that suggests me that some memory leak going on in the system. Okay. And also sometimes also you can probably see the graph something like this is it. It, 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 it comes down and it stays here. It, even the user is gone, still the memory is not recovered. All right. So this is these are the kind of graphs. By looking at this kind of graph, you can tell what is the characteristics of the system. And one more thing is a network utilization. So like you know, like what is the number? Like, you know, for example, if this is your, your 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 server that you are testing, and we can we can find out what is the Input output network bytes are transferred through this Ethernet card. All right, and if we plot, then we can get a good idea that how your network process is going on. So essentially, what I what I show you here in this in this discussion that we can do this kinds of analysis, and one of the analysis that all this performance test we do is on based on this transaction, how my response time is behaving. So we will we'll discuss more in the in the next lecture thank you